Welcome back to the channel. The series is from whoredom to whole. I am Gourmet Kids Third Event. Today's topic is sex and sex toys. So during this topic, um, I've been on this thing for a few months. I'm just trying to get it squared away. Um, of course, sometimes I feel shy, but I mean, I'm asking God to just help me get this out because he keeps putting it in my spirit. So I'm going to do it. Um, of course we know the scripture, um, Hebrews 13 and four says marriage is honorable in all and the bed undefiled, but whoremongers and adulterers God would judge. And so if we focus on this scripture for one second, it says whoremongers and adulterers God would judge. Now the bedroom, because it's undefiled, we make it defiled by adding sex toys. And so when you have those toys, it is you committing adultery almost. I'm not going to say almost. I'm going to say in a way where you're no longer allowing your bedroom of the married bedroom to be um, honorable. So honorable means bringing or worthy of honor, deserving of respect or high regard. And then undefiled means pure. So if marriage is pure and the sexual pleasure is supposed to be pure, why do we need more? Why do we add what the world has to offer. Why do we allow Satan to um, confuse our mind or deceive us to think that we need something else to please our spouse or to please ourselves? If I'm in Christ and Christ is in me, why would I bring in my marital bedroom that things not be of Christ? God wants us to enjoy sexual pleasures in marriage. He created us to love and enjoy life. But once we add outside things, toys, people, and even imaginations, which is, you know, porn, you got the books, you looking at certain things, um, we bring in wickedness. We bring in the unseen evils that destroys the sanctity of marriage. And so a lot of times we quote, quote the scripture, um, we brustle not against flesh and blood. And the problem is, of course, there is spiritual wickedness, but there are times when we invite the spiritual wickedness into our lives. So if we invite toys in the bedroom, then we're inviting the spiritual wickedness. We're inviting problems because of course, sex toys, sometimes like, you know, you're not pleased with just one. So you got to get something else and that's not going to be enough. So you got to do something else. And then you cause problems in your marriage. And then, so everybody's separate. So you separate it now and you're doing your own thing in the corner of your own, your own bedroom or wherever you are. The things that would have been, as the Bible states, honorable or holy is no longer when we add human ideas or we allow our desires to take over. Satan reminds us of the scriptures when we want to um, do something different or if we're convicted by the Holy Spirit. So if the Holy Spirit says, OK, um, take this toy out or like, you know, no more of that. Like, you know, you got to clean up your marriage. Of course, the scripture will pop up where the bedroom is undefiled. So. We defile the bedroom by adding to it the things that are not of Christ. Earlier, it was so crazy to me how this scripture, well, I was thinking about how God can heal the sick, raise the dead, make the dumb to speak, make the blind see, make the deaf to hear. But then we don't believe that he can heal our marriage or touch our reproductive organs so that we can, I guess, feel better. Like, you know, whatever the struggle is or whatever the problem is that will cause you to go out and buy sex toys. Why don't you ask God to heal, you know, whatever is broken or messed up on the inside? So if he can heal the lame man and he can make the blind to see, why can't he touch your marriage? Why can't he heal the reproductive organs and make you and your spouse, you know, be pleased without a toy. 
something's not right in my opinion. So we have to ask God for wisdom and it is both people praying. So if if marriage is two people, then both people ought to be asking for wisdom so that God can direct and he'll direct you to go into the same way. Like, you know, you won't be going to the right and your spouse going to the left or one won't be going up and one going down. God will have y'all both on the same route. And he'll have you going in the same direction to accomplish the goal. So the goal is to have a a holy, honorable marriage, a sanctified marriage, one that God ordained and he would be pleased with. So if he ordained this and he's pleased with marriage, then why wouldn't he have you going in the same direction so you can enjoy it? But when we don't agree, everybody separate. It starts a slow death. And that's why, you know, the toys are introduced to the married bedroom. So then nobody's talking, nobody's communicating, nobody's conversating. And when there is no realness, you introduce the outside into your space that should be holy and honorable. You're doing that because you're using man's wisdom, wisdom of the world, wisdom of Satan, which is all foolishness compared to God's wisdom. And, you know, the people who often use the sex toys, they're never pleased. That's why they always have to go get something else, either that or then you got to watch the porn or you got to go get somebody else because, you know, that one person that you've been sleeping with for all these years, now they're boring. And the thing is, people won't have to be so boring if, you know, you get on the right track. If we get in God, like really, really get into God and dig deep, like, you know, there's going to be so much other things that you're going to be thinking about that you're not going to even like, you know, feel like you're missing anything, especially like, you know, the sexual part, like you're going to enjoy your sexual um, partner. um, But the thing is, you won't be focused on it as much as you would be if you're outside in living um, in the mindset of the world. Sometimes the innermost being may have issues that have not been acknowledged. So if you don't know that you have problems and sometimes God even speaks to us and he's trying to heal us or he's trying to show us things, but we have to be sensitive to his voice and to make sure that we're not listening to the devil instead. So if the devil is introducing or telling you, oh, it's okay. Now now you need to get some sex toys or now you need to do this to spice up your marriage. Then that's where the problems come in. And so when you're listening to the devil, then that means that your relationship with the devil is stronger and so you've been ignoring the voice of God and so the voice of God sounds like a stranger and so the only way his voice won't sound like a stranger is if you have a relationship with him and he said his sheep know his voice and the stranger they would not follow so that means that your relationship with him has to be strong enough so that you understand okay when you're trying to go do something or buy something or introduce something into your marriage that's not pleasing to him he can direct you and stop you And that's when, you know, the obedience and like, you know, listening to the voice of God, like your father and making sure that you're in line with his word. He said he's our shepherd. And if we're his sheep and he's a shepherd, we got to listen to him and go his way so that we won't mess up the marriage that he ordained. And you got to figure out if he ordained that marriage. Sometimes sexual intercourse or pleasures of the flesh is a coping mechanism to cure the issue. And that's what we're not supposed to be curing the issues with. You're supposed to cure your issues with Jesus. Like we have to get Jesus in our life or into the marriage. So many are trying to fix the problem within with substances and people and objects. So we do things, we use stuff to please us on the outside, but we still broken on the inside or your heart is still broken or your mindset is still messed up. So we must find something that will stay within to cure us within. And the only thing that's going to cure us within is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit comes within the word of God. Having the word of God comes within. Having the mind of Christ, the mind of Christ will be within. So once we get the mind of Christ, let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. Once we get that, the mind of Christ, it'll be, it will be able to function outwardly, properly. And then lastly, Hebrews 13 and 5 said, let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with such things as ye have. For he hath said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. And that that last part for he saith, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee has been in my spirit for a few days. And God was showing me how although he would never leave or forsake us, we can leave him and forsake him by doing the things of the world, by setting aside his will and just bringing in our own will. So if you're bringing in the sex toys, then of course you're leaving God. And so like, you know, Hosea, when he was married to Gomer and she was whoring and doing all the things that she wasn't supposed to be doing and that's representing us. So of course, like if you're in a marriage, regardless of if you're in marriage with your spouse, that representation of 
God, godly marriage. So if God established this marriage and it's supposed to be a godly marriage, you're stepping away from the way he wants it to be by adding things. And so that is adultery and that is um, defilement to your marriage. And so we create um, impure ways to um, mess up the marriage. And then we're trying to figure out, okay, so what's the problem? Um, why are we fighting? And then then we're begging God to help and fix and, and restore and so, of course, he is able to restore. And so that's what we're going to talk about now. We're going to go crazy. All right, let's go crazy. Confess. Confess that you defiled your marriage and allowed wickedness inside. Confess that you need restoration for your marriage. Repent by throwing away the toys and turning off the porn and working daily to change your mindset. Accept the mind of Christ. Let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. And once you get that mind within you, you'll be able to function without. Zealously seek ways to please the Lord so he'll show you and lead you and guide you how to please your spouse. Zealously pray that God directs your path and yield to his voice, his word, his will, and his way. I pray that something from this short video has been instrumental to you. I'm not a preacher. I'm just excited about God and want to pull people towards him. If this message was for you, harden not your heart. Align your life with the word of God so you'll receive his best. All right. I hope to see you soon. Hey, and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. See you next time.